Next, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to edit pre-existing elements in Revit. So, for example, how to rename levels. And as I mentioned earlier, when we were creating the levels and the views, you don't want to use that same definition when you're editing things as when you're creating them because you'll end up with duplicates. So this definition that we will create is custom designed for editing things that already exist. It doesn't create new things. So I'm going to open up a project and it is this one right here, edit and rename levels. And I'm just going to go to an elevation view where we can see what the levels are named. So if I zoom in here, you can see that they're just levels one, two, three, four, etc. And we're going to rename those levels. So I'm going to go ahead and click on new. And the first thing that I have to do is identify what I'm working with. And in this case, it's levels. So just like we did in a previous exercise, I'm going to gather up the category for levels. So I'm going to use the category selection node and I'm going to find levels on this very long list. Not level heads, but the actual levels. And then I need to collect all of the levels in the file. So that's all elements of category. And plug that into category. And then I need to get a specific parameter out of the levels. And that parameter is obviously the name. And so I'm going to say get element parameter by value and name. And so our elements are the levels and the parameter name is simply name. Now you might be wondering, how do I know that that is the specific parameter that I'm looking for? Well, if you don't know exactly what the name of a parameter is that you're trying to pull out and get into Dynamo, all you have to do is go into Revit find the thing that you're looking for, for example, this level, click on it, and then look through the properties. And so in the properties, there is somewhere in here where it says under identity data, it just says name. Okay, and then it says level four. So that is the parameter that I'm looking for. And so however it is named here in Revit, that is what you need to call out in Dynamo. So in this case, it's just the word name. It is case sensitive and you know all of that stuff. So it has to be written exactly the same way. And so that's how I know that that is what needs to be written right here. And then what I need to do is I need to know how many levels there actually are in the file. And this will make sense in just in a bit. But first, I just need to know how many there are in the file. So in this case, I need to use the list count. And so what this does is it plugs a list in here and then it spits out a number. And it's just how many of those items there are in the file. And then what I'm going to do is take this list and then I want to apply something to that list. So in this case, I'm going to use the list of repeated item. And so the item that I want to add is the letter H to all of the levels. Because typically, a lot of times when we have multiple buildings on a project, we'll add a letter that signifies the program of the building. So if we were doing a hotel, for example, it would be H level 12. Or if it was an office building, it would be O level 12. Sometimes there's letter designations for different buildings and whatnot. But when you have multiple buildings on a project, you often have to add some sort of a prefix to your levels. So the count goes into the amount, and then our repeated item is simply the letter H. And so in quotations, I just type the capital H. So now what I want to do is take the original name back here and add it to this down here. So basically, we need the count down here so that we can create a list of repeated items that matches the number of items in our list. So we have 11 levels, and so this results in 11 H's that we can sync up to the names up here. In order to do that, we're going to use the list combine node, which is this guy right here. Now the way that the list combine node works is that it establishes how many lists that you have. It starts with two, but you can add more if you have more lists. But then you're also defining a combinator. Now in this particular case, we're taking one string and we're adding another string to it. So it's essentially 
an addition. So the combinator in this particular case is simply the addition node. So we do a plus sign and then we plug this in as our combinator. Now that's all that we have to do here. This is just plugging in and telling this node how to combine these things. And then we take our first list, which is this. And this is the first list because we want it to come in the beginning of the name. And then we take this and plug it in here. And then that produces our combined list. So if I hit run again, and then I expand this, as you can see here, it says H level, etc. But one thing that I didn't do is see how the H and the level are together. There's no space between there. So what I want to do back here is actually add a space. And so I say H and then space, and then we'll rerun this and that will put a space in between the H and the word level. And there we go. And so that is actually the names of the levels that I want. And so now that I have the proper names, what I want to do is get that back into Revit. And so in order to do that, we use the set parameter by name. And so our elements in this case goes all the way back to our original levels. The parameter name is once again, just name. So that plugs into there. And then the new value, so we're basically taking those old names and replacing them with these new names right here that gets plugged into value. And so when I run this, let me split the screen here. I'm gonna zoom into the level so you can see them actually change when it runs in Dynamo. So we hit run, and then in a second here, you'll see H's appear inside Revit. There it goes. So now we have H in front of all of our level names. So doing that in Dynamo and having it change everything all at once is a lot faster and a lot easier than having to do it manually inside of Revit. So you don't have to click on every single level, change the name, or do whatever you want to do with it.